Hi everybody, Coach Keith here with the last video in our definitive guide to squatting series. Today, we're gonna to be looking at getting under the bar, how to set up for the squat with a barbell and some barbell squat variations. Let's get started. Now that we've seen proper squat form, We've built up enough strength to do goblet squats and fixed any mobility issues. Now we're ready to start squatting with the barbell. So the first thing to talk about with the barbell is going to be bar placement on the rack and hand placement. So for bar placement on the rack, you want to set the bar so that way you need to take just a slight bend in the knees in order to clear the bar off the pins. So typically putting the bar just at upper chest level or just below the shoulders is going to be a good place to start. When we talk about hand placement on the bar, there's two things to consider. First is going to be shoulder mobility. So we can't put our hands in closer than our shoulders will allow. And the other is going to be wrist mobility for the same reason. So for me personally, what I do is I take my pointer fingers and I just place them on the power rings as shown in the picture. And that's a comfortable grip width for me. Now, if you can get your hands closer together, that's ideal because the tighter in that we can get our hands to our body, the more we can push our elbow and tricep into our lats, making our core more rigid. So we wanna put our hands as close together as our shoulder and wrist mobility will allow. The reason wrist mobility is important is because we want to make sure that the bar is centered directly over our forearm so that way the weight is supported on bone. If our wrist was bent back like this and the bar was sitting here in the hand, it would be pulling this hand down and all that weight would be pulling on these tendons. That's going to cause wrist issues and a lot of other problems. So when we step up to the bar and we grab onto it, we want to make sure that our wrist is nicely in line with our forearm. Now we'll talk about the two main types of bar placement. That's going to be the high bar and the low bar. In the high bar position, the bar is just going to rest on the top of the traps. This is going to be the most upright variation of this squat, and it's going to focus more on the quads. In the low bar position, the bar is going to be sitting on the lower traps and the rear delts. That's going to reduce the leverage on the low back and allow you to use your hips and hamstrings more and move more weight. The low bar squat is common in powerlifting, and that's going to utilize the quads, but it's also going to utilize the hips and lower back and hamstrings more. Now I'll demonstrate the first position, which is the high bar position. So I put my fingers on the rings, my Elbows are nice and in line. I step under. I lift up and the bar is sitting nicely on my traps. One common mistake that I see with newer lifters or lifters who don't have a lot of musculature on their upper back is that they will end up putting the squat bar on this bone. So if you feel the back of your neck, there's a protruding bone here on your spine. If lifters don't have a lot of muscle on their upper back, sometimes they'll put the bar on that bone. Do not put a squat bar on this bone. So. If you don't have any musculature or not enough, it's uncomfortable to have the bar on your traps. Do goblet squats and then use that time while you're doing goblet squats to do enough barbell rows to build your upper back so that way you do have the muscle to comfortably support the bar. The second position I'll demonstrate is the low bar position. So again, I take my grip, I step under, this time, the bar is going to be on the back of my rear delts and lower traps as I pick it up. And then I step back into position. Okay. 
The issue with the low bar squat is because we're now supporting a barbell with hundreds of pounds on the back of our shoulders, which is our most mobile and a very fragile joint, it can tend to lead to some long-term shoulder problems. So I always advise people to stick to the high bar squat. Even though you may not lift as much weight, it's far better for long-term shoulder health. Now we're gonna get into the last squat variation, which is gonna be the box squat. The box squat's gonna be a good variation if you have pre-existing knee issues or you're recovering from tendonitis and it's uncomfortable to do a traditional free squat. Because the box squat is going to take the pressure off of our knee, it's a good variation for these reasons. However, it does utilize the quadriceps less and the hamstrings and hips more. So just be aware that when you're using this variation, you're not getting as much quad work. I'll demonstrate the setup on the box squat from the front. So we'll step up to a corner and take a wider stance than we would in our traditional squat. We're also gonna have our toes pointed further out. Now I'll demonstrate the movement from the side here. So as I take my stance, point my toes out, the first movement of a box squat is gonna to be to hinge the hips back. So unlike a traditional free squat where we're gonna simultaneously unlock at the knee and at the hip and descend straight down, in a box squat, the first movement is going to be to push the hips back. So pushing the butt back, then we go into our normal squatting cues of pushing into the floor and twisting the floor out to descend. So. The box squat will look like this. So first I hinge my hips back, then I press into the floor and twist out in order to descend. So as you can see when I get to the bottom here, my shins are practically vertical and that's what's taking the pressure off the knee. Two common problems that I see in the box squat are one, relaxing at the bottom. So letting the core go, letting the upper back go, that creates a rounded spine, and it's very difficult to stand up from that position. The other mistake is rocking on the box. So when people will come down, they'll either rock back or they'll rock forward to gain momentum to rocket themselves up off of the box. We want to pause on the box and come back up in the same position that we end on. So as I perform the box squat, I first hinge back, I twist the floor out, pushing my, heel, my feet in. As I come down, I'm still rigid, and then I stand back up from that same position. You can utilize the box squat with a barbell, or as a goblet squat, or just a body weight variation. All right guys, that's it for the different squat variations. Now you can go out and hit that new squat PR. Guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Leave your questions in the comments section below. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and a share. Check out AmericanIronTraining.com for workout programs and apparel. I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks for watching.